Well, Celtic have a new manager, hip hip hooray, Ange Postecoglou. And it gives me enormous pleasure uh, to, to welcome Ange. My goal is to have this club playing football that's going to excite every one of you and we're going to be successful. Kyogo's amazing. I mean, he's unbelievable. He's our best striker. He's our best defender. He was all over the pitch. No, it was a huge shock. I absolutely did not see that coming. There's always two sides to these stories, isn't there, guys? We've won the Premier Sports Cup final by two goals to one. I'm surprised you never opened with Konnichiwa Hamish. That absolute euphoria of that goal going in. It's inc it was incredible. I don't even know where to start with that, but the facts that I'm sure you're well aware of are that Celtic have just beaten Rangers by three goals to nil. So I'm just looking at this, the upcoming schedule. I know we've got to play the top six teams. But this is a worst to lose now, surely. I look smug right now. Hopefully I look really smug right now. Champions, Champions again. Champions again. Champions again. Lele. Hi there everyone, you're watching 67 Hail Hail. Celtic have a new manager, hip hip hooray, Ange Postecoglou. I hope you're well, thanks for joining us. I hope life is good wherever you're skiving work from. I'm Hamish, John is here as well. John, we'll get Hello. into all the, the bits and bobs in a minute, but just original early feelings on the news. Look, this is long overdue. I'm excited to have a manager in place. But Neil Lennon resigned in February. <laughs> um, we're here on the 10th of June. And I'm excited for a new era at Celtic. I can't make any heavy predictions of how it's going to go, whether it's going to be successful or a disaster. I think anyone who's proclaiming either is probably at it a bit. Um, but my gut feeling is that, um, you know, get behind this guy and, and see what happens. I think, we, you know, the, the Scottish football and Australian football communities have done a fair bit of mutual learning over the last <laughs> few days about um, what sort of situation Celtic's in and what sort of manager... Um, Ange Postacoglu is in and, and I've got to admit I had some doubts early doors when we woke up on a Saturday morning to all this chatter on social media about Ange potentially being the guy for Celtic and and it's it's uh, we've always thought it was only a matter of time until someone in Europe took the punt on Ange because he's a he's a top class coach I just didn't think it would be Scotland and in particular sort of like a club like Celtic or or you know even Rangers I know he was linked there a few years ago just because the as I, as I mentioned, and as he said in the headline, the risk factor is so high. Like, but there is that sort of period, that that teething period at the start, which can be quite uncomfortable. But I think history has shown in every job he's had that once you get through it, um, it's worth it for sure. The question I think that everyone's asked themselves is, is he going to get that time? The answer is no, probably at Celtic. But the more I think about it, the more I think he's probably still able to have that initial teething period and still win at Celtic, obviously because... I mean, you guys finished second still by an absolute mile, uh, relatively speaking, in the league last year. So as long as he's able to show some positive signs in the way the team plays, the, as long as you know fans start to listen to him actually talk about the football, like it's very quickly after his first press conference, I reckon you'll start to get a picture of this guy and who he operate, how he operates. Sorry, and as soon as he's, as long as he's showing a few little signs like that on the field and off the field, and as long as you know, you don't get embarrassed by Rangers in the old firm. Um, I think he'll still get enough time to do what he needs to do and eventually that's going to pay massive dividends for you guys, I reckon. Ange Postecoglou, we'll move on to him because he's actually touched down in uh, Glasgow. Celtic put out a statement earlier on Wednesday um, saying just that, that he's come to Glasgow. Uh, the club say he went straight to Lennox Town on Wednesday. He's completed his quarantine and will take training for the first time tomorrow morning. That's Thursday morning. I think it's a case of um, hope the guy does well. You know, it's, you hear different reports and you have know, people that's worked with him and everything else. Just because he's not a, a household name here doesn't mean he's going to be a, a great uh, sign for us. 
I hope he is. Just wondering, obviously Tom Rogic has played with the new manager in the past. I'm just wondering if he's had anything to, to say at the dressing room and, and if you've actually spoken to the new manager yet. No, I've not I've not spoken to the new manager yet, but um I think going off his interview uh, when he when he first joined, it's you know it's very promising. Uh, you know, he mentioned the uh, he likes to bring academy players through the, into the first team. So I think all the academy boys looking at that will it's a good chance to give a good impression uh, in pre season and, and start well. Well, when I first arrived I had a kinda of small conversation with him but he's a very good guy in the training pitch and off the pitch he's very ha- happy and friendly and he's been good to work with just implementing his own ideas and kind of getting everybody to work to 100% every day it's it's been great so far what are the burning questions that we we need to know because I, I feel a bit weird like Postecoglou is here he's getting ready to take training but I feel like there's so much we still don't know about what it's going to look like under him. Today, Ange Postecoglou will meet press for the first time as Celtic manager. He'll be joined by incoming Celtic chief executive Dom Mackay. He'll meet what you would refer to as the mainstream press as well as Celtic fan media, of which 67 Hail Hail are part of. We're delighted to have been asked along to Celtic Park today. Not quite sure how the press conference is going to play out, how it's going to work whether we're going to be part of the main conference or what, but we will get a chance to ask questions to both Postacoglu and Mackay. Good afternoon, everybody. Nice to see you all. Very welcome, South Park. Um, And it gives me enormous pleasure uh, to to welcome Ange to Celtic Park. Thank you, and uh, thanks for the warm welcome, everyone. And uh, as I said upstairs, uh, uh, super excited and uh, very humbled to be in this position. Um, Well aware of... uh, the size, magnitude, and and the traditions of this football club, and my role here is to hopefully, um, yeah, create some more special moments and 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 create things that that last well beyond my tenure here, so that uh, my time here is is remembered and uh, uh, remembered in a special way. So I look forward to what's ahead, and and uh, I guess my main task is to make sure that uh, I keep all of you very very happy over the next period. So. Um, I'll be working hard to do that, so thank you very much. Hi guys, uh, Hamish from 67 Hail Hail. Um, just to welcome both of you to the club, obviously a, a lot of work ahead of both of you, so all the best. Um, Ange, I'll start with you. Obviously, like everyone in this room, we wanted to, to find out as much as we could about you. Um, we spoke to Vince Regari from your homeland, I think you know. He had a lot of positive things to say. Um, one thing he did raise was the fact that uh, your teams can take some time to get used to your way of playing, your philosophy, and um, just the, the overall kind of ethos. Is that something you think is a, a fair comment? And how far do you think this uh, Celtic side you inherited are from where you want them to be? Yeah, look, I, I mean, people always sort of say that, that, you know, it takes time. But, I mean, I, I, I assume... Everyone wants to be successful. They all like the ending. So I, I think if you talk to people I've actually been involved with, none of them really talk about how long it took. They just talk about the fact that it was, you know, a special time. So I, I don't put time frames on that. That thing, those things. Um, sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes it takes a, a little bit more time. There's no doubt you're not going to see in the first game, first Champions League game, the team flying the way I want to. But at the same time, um, it's not to say that we can't make significant pro- progress quickly. Uh, my goal is to have this club playing football that's going to excite every one of you and we're going to be successful. Um, I can't say how that story is going to be written. Like most great stories, there's going to be some twists and turns, a little bit of unknown. That's the exciting bit. I can't tell you it's going to take a month, two months, six months. What I do know is that um, whenever I've committed to the task and... and, and um, that's been at every club I've been in. Uh, the ending's been the way it should be. So every day I'm going to work hard to make sure it's as quick as possible. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to take shortcuts. I'm not going to um, compromise what I'm saying and what I believe be- just to win a game, because ultimately I want us to be the very best. So I'm not going to compromise on that. Um, so I can't tell you how long it's going to take. Um, I will tell you that we will get there. 
Right, it's a Wednesday afternoon, it's uh, just coming up to five o'clock and Celtic have just made their return. Season 21-22 is underway, the Ange Postacoglu Celtic reign has begun and it's begun with a victory, 3-1, I was about to say at home, I don't know why I was about to say that, in Wales, it's kind of our home at the moment, it's Sheffield Wednesday's home as well, but that's who we beat by three goals to one, we had to come from behind as well. Uh, but we did just that to, to win. We are now one week away from Celtic's first competitive match of the season and we still only have one signing made under Ange Postacoglu. The latest one is 19-year-old Israeli winger Lil Abanda. Now, he plays for, and I need to look at my laptop for this, Maccabi Peta Tifka, Tikva, where he scored 13 goals last season. We had the Champions League draw, second qualifying round. Celtic have been paired up against FC Michelin, the second best team in Denmark last season. We will, barring any um, messing about on UEFA's part, have the first leg at home. Ange Postecoglou's first game, competitive game as Celtic manager, will be at Celtic Park. Amazing to be back. Once I went in, put my ticket in the turnstile, walked up about 8 million flights of stairs to the upper tier of the North Stand. I've never been in that part of the ground before. I think it's probably the only part of the ground I've never sat in. Great view, right at the halfway line, great view of the pitch. Loved it. And I was trying to think whether it felt strange to be back or whether it felt completely normal to be back. I thought the whole night was enjoyable. It was brilliant to have Celtic back. It felt like Celtic were back. It's been a long pandemic. It's been a bit of a nightmare, to be honest with you. Um, and having a crowd there, I thought, added a real element of it to it. I think it felt like Celtic again. And I've not been able to say that for a, for quite a while. In terms of the result, obviously, we would have been looking for a win. But there was ex positives and excitement and negatives to take. So we'll dive into it. I think, you know, in the first half, Hamish... I thought we looked pretty good at points. I thought we looked kind of sharp in an attacking sense. I thought Lyle Abada looked like the business. I just love Postecoglou. I just love the way he's coming across now. I think every time he opens his mouth, you feel more confident, more secure with this guy being our manager. I'm not saying we're going to go and win a treble this season. I still think it's going to be extremely difficult to win the league, to win any trophy this season and even to do well in Europe, given the state Celtic are in. But I think we have the best man in charge at the moment. I really do. The way he comes across, the early signs. And I wouldn't have said that a couple of months ago when I first heard the name Manj Postecoglou. So it's been a learning curve for me, probably has been for you too. And the good thing is, we're just at the start of this learning, this journey. And as Postecoglou said to me directly at the Celtic Fan Media Conference, it's the journey that's the most exciting bit. So that's kind of where I'm at. If you're going to Celtic Park tomorrow, if you're one of the lucky 18,000 to be at the West Ham friendly, then enjoy yourself. Hi everyone, how are we all doing? Um, the live reaction to <laughs> a 6-2 home defeat for Celtic. Of course, pre-season results don't matter at all, John, but mm -hmm. that is the reality that faces us today. What's your, your feelings after that? Yeah, you say pre-season doesn't matter, but it doesn't... I mean, you still come away from the game feeling a bit deflated, a bit disappointed. Obviously, that wasn't what anyone wanted to see today. We're back tonight with the live reaction. Fingers crossed for a good result in Meacheland. Well, we can add the name of Meacheland to the list of terrible European results Celtic have had four years in a row now. We've bowed out of Champions League qualifying. Uh, I don't quite know where tonight ranks in the list of Athens and Cluj and Ferencvaros and Malmos, but I'm sure we'll come on to that. Uh, we've got you and joining me, Hamish. We've got Stevie making his debut as well. Stevie, it's sad we've not got you on in better times making your debut. We're out the Champions League again. What's your, your thoughts on tonight? I've got to say, I didn't expect it like that. I mean, I think it was a coin flip and it was a 50-50. Uh, Michelin aren't a great side and neither are we. I think we were definitely the better team last week and then our naivety kicked in and you saw the state of us. Uh, as soon as it went one each and we looked really poor and that's when I thought mm, next week at their ground, again, it could be, it could go either way. But I thought when we went 1-0 up, um, if you said to me after that, I would expect us to be controlling it because I didn't see anything from Michelin to think they're going to pose us any problems. But... As it always is with Celtic in Europe, and as it's been with Celtic, 
for the last 24 months now, uh, it was self-inflicted again. And although I wasn't expecting it, <laughs> it's a real sword you need to take. To be, on, to be honest, when the draw was done, I was concerned because you know the team's not set up right yet. It's not formed. You're still waiting for players coming in, and obviously new players have have signed, but have not joined the team yet. Um, there's still issues with the goalkeeper as we had last year. So it's uh, even if we got through last night, you know, I didn't, I wouldn't fancy us to to get through the next tie away at PSV. Um, yeah. I think we would struggle with that. You know, after watching wee bits of the game at the weekend against West Ham. Uh, you know, I think we would struggle. We're not, we're not at that level yet, unfortunately, but hopefully we can get there pretty soon. The frustrating thing for me is that I think Ange knows about all this. I think he knows exactly what the problems are in that squad. And I, I just feel like, he, he, you know, for various reasons, whether it's the, the club not spending or it's because of COVID-related issues with getting players in the door, I think he's frustrated at the moment with the team that he's got. I mean, you can see that in his interviews. Um, and, and that's a slight concern in itself, but it's also good because, Jackie, I think we can see probably see where where he wants to take the team, and it's just about getting there. And it's it's you know that's what's going to be frustrating is is the road there is going to be long and difficult. I think. Yeah, it will be. I think that I think that's that's clear. You know, it's tough just now. Last night was was a sore one. The weekend was a sore one, a friendly, which doesn't really happen. The the. the <laughs> The amount of times that we were exposed at the back, running in one on one with our goalkeeper was incredible. It was just, you know, like schoolboy, schoolboy stuff. You know, just one pass through up, breaking on his fair corners, and then it's in the back of the net. Um, and it could have been a lot more, to be honest. It could have been a lot more the weekend. So far, we've signed Liam Shaw from Sheffield Wednesday, Asazi Origidi from Sheffield Wednesday. Both of those, I think a wee bit away from being Celtic first-team regulars. You only have to look at the fact that uh, Postacoglu brought on Dane Murray the other night instead of Urugidi. Liam Shaw may be a little bit closer to the first team, but that, we'll wait and see with that one. Leela Bada, who seems very much to be a player who can compete for a first-team place, although he is only 19. We've also signed the, the Japanese player, Kyogo Furuhashi as well, who... Certainly seems to be a player who can come in and, and can make an impact right away. Uh, Carol Starfelt, we believe that one's going to happen imminently. Maybe by the time you're watching this, he will have signed for Celtic. There were just 35 minutes between the announcement of Ayer leaving and the announcement of his replacement, Starfelt, joining the club. You know, as well, you know, you're coming into a very young defence at Celtic and it may be that you're needed as a leader of that defensive line from, from the very start. Is that something the manager's spoken to you about specifically yet? And is that leadership role something you're comfortable with? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, <clears throat> I think, uh, I think that leadership uh, doesn't always have to do with age. Also, so uh, I hope that uh, everyone uh, who is on the pitch will, uh, you know, speak a lot, uh, show passion, and uh, lead, uh, try to lead the team. Uh, of course, I, I hope to come in and attribute uh, with that as good as I can and. Uh, uh, I feel uh, I feel comfortable doing it also, but uh, also there's uh, like I haven't I I've already been I've been here only one day and I already seen that uh, there's a lot of leaders uh, that uh, on this pitch, so I'm not worried about that. I actually thought we controlled the game we um, in long spells, the same as the tie against Michelin, but. When it's stating the obvious, but when your strikers aren't up to it in general, or your striker or your attackers aren't up to it in the final third, and when your defenders are making you know silly mistakes and letting uh, you know attackers in too easily, you're not going to stand a chance in a match. And that final goal, I've actually not seen it back, but from you know the first glimpse at it, it just seemed like a, a horrible, horrible goal to concede. I don't know yeah. where Scott Bain was. I don't know where the defenders were at all. I've never seen a team that when they get their own set pieces, you have no faith in them at all. Mm -hmm. And conversely, when the opposition gets set pieces, you fear the worst. You just hope that this is going to be a sort of blessing in disguise. I know just off the back of two defeats in a row there, but um, you're just hoping this is a, a blessing in disguise with the with the chief executive watching on, like we need players, we need we need bodies in the door, and we don't even need we don't need projects. We need ready players now because there's some positions that are just crying out for 
reinforcements. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now we're going to chat today about a transfer story that has broken in the last half an hour. It's come from the legend that is Fabrizio Romano. He is absolutely obsessed with Celtic nowadays. I heard he's on the waiting list for a season ticket. He has reported that we are interested and in talks with Tottenham Hotspur to bring in former England goalkeeper Joe Hart. Not quite sure how to feel about this totally. I've been on social media just to kind of gauge the, the general reaction of the Celtic support and in general, I think it's relatively negative, the reaction. I feel probably similar to a lot of that, but I can't deny there's a small part of me maybe about 20 25 percent it's just thinking maybe this could work just as just as i'm sure celtic did their research on me as a as a person and as a goalkeeper i did obviously my research as best i could and you know the, the feedback was unbelievable um you know the, there's nothing but positivity about this place um nothing but great um great words and great stories of special relationships with the fans um and enjoying those those big moments james mccarthy 30 years old, a lot of injury problems in recent seasons. Tell me a little bit about Furuhashi then. He was probably always destined to leave the J-League. Are you surprised it's to Celtic and to Scotland? Uh, in the end, yes. Um, it was one of those things that just happens. He's um, He's been going on for uh, probably three years where he's been pretty much basically going overseas and um, a lot of teams have been interested in him, especially in Holland and Belgium, because uh, previously he hadn't played for the national team. So um, Britain wasn't going to get a working visa anyway. Uh, I think Vissel Kobe had big plans for themselves as well as him. And they brought in Iniesta and Podolski and David Villa and convinced him to stay a little bit longer and learn from those players. And then last year, they qualified for the Asian Champions League after winning the uh, Emperor's Cup. Vissel's first ever trophy. So uh, probably another little pay rise, perhaps, and the fact that Vissel Kobe are playing in the Champions League, they convinced him to stay again, uh, which I think was uh, excellent for both parties. He learned some more, he played better, and he did play for the national team, which allowed the uh, Celtic move, I think, in the end. Thank you, Hugo. Um, you seem to be quite a versatile player, um, but what I want to know is what position do you find best for yourself? Is it on the left? Is it on the right? Is it up front as a striker? Good question. Well, my advantage is uh, in uh, between among uh, among attacking positions. I can play in, in in any position. But if I have to choose, uh, I would say uh, striker. Right, Jablonets 2, Celtic 4 is the final score from the Czech Republic. I feel pretty good about that. There was obviously bits of the performance that we can chat about, bits of the performance that need a lot of work. I think the defence mainly, but I thought there was a lot of positives there. And I think we'd all have taken 4-2 before the game. And um, We've got Stevie and David on with me. David, come to you first, thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I mean, like you say... I think everybody would have taken 4-2 at the start of the night. Interesting times, guys. I feel a bit better than I did at the start of the night anyway. We've got a 4-2 win away from home in the Europa League. We're looking good for the playoff round against AZ Alkmaar. Uh, we're going to leave it there because I think a couple of us certainly have got plans this evening. Hopefully all of you watching have plans as well because you need to celebrate a positive Celtic result. We don't get them very often. Well, everyone, look at those smiles on our three faces. It hasn't always been like that, but it's pretty impossible not to be smiling after that from Celtic today. 6-0 winners over Dundee. Just so many positives, John. We're going to have to do about an hour-long video. It's ridiculous. I mean, I can't remember the last time we played that well. Stevie, you've got a better memory than me. When was the last time we played that well? Even I'm struck, certainly not last season anyway, John. No. You're going to have to go beyond that under the man who shall not be mentioned, uh, <laughs> Rain. But that was just a delight, wasn't it? 
it was unbelievable I'm, I'm buzzing i was buzzing from almost the, you know from the 10 minutes onwards kyoko's amazing i mean he's unbelievable he's our best striker he's our best defender he was all over the pitch he was everywhere he was flying into tackles he was closing the ball down he was making unreal movement off the ball making space for others other people were linking up with him he was scoring like larson it was it was the best home <laughs> debut i've seen for quite a while I, I mean again i can't remember the last one that i've seen that was so good he could have had six goals today and, and that is no exaggeration you know he misses that sitter in the first few minutes the positive is it didn't let he didn't let it get to him at all because he scores minutes later. He scores the two goals within I think four or five minutes, and then has a chance for the hat trick right after the second goal. Again, it's a bit of a sitter, and he, he probably should score. And then he has a chance in the second half where he, he's played through after a kind of a ricochet, I think, and kind of slices it over the bar. But again, I don't know about you guys, but I felt the hat trick was still quite inevitable. You knew it was going to come at some stage, yeah. even after he missed those chances. I mean, the great thing about him as well is that he's got charisma, he's got personality, he's not just a great footballer, just the way he celebrated his first goal, you know, he's pointing to the number on the back of his shirt, the way he's kind of, uh, you know, bringing in all the applause for the Man of the Match award, you know, towards the end, he's a player who plays with a smile on his face and, and again, it's just a joy to watch, it makes you feel brilliant as a Celtic fan. Right, it's at these points I feel quite sorry for Jackie McNamara because all the last season we had him on as our guest and all he had to chat about was 4-1 <laughs> home defeats to Sparta Prague and getting turned over by Rangers. Mr Scott McDonald saunters in first week of the season and Celtic score six against Dundee. Explain yourself, Scott. <laughs> hey, we shouldn't be complaining, should we? Um, it's great to actually come on here and, and talk really positively about what's just gone on in the week. It's been a really good week for Celtic, hasn't it, in Europe? And then uh, obviously that performance yesterday was, was, you know, it was dynamic, wasn't it? There's so much to be positive about, Scott. What what one thing sprung out to you above everything else in, in yesterday's performance? Well, I think we're, we're going to talk about, you know, a little Japanese superstar that's, you know, just come onto the scene. He scored midweek and then he's, he's got a hat-trick. Kyogo was superb yesterday. His movement off the ball... Um, was something else to see and albeit the fans who got in which we'll touch on later which was fantastic to see also uh would have seen you know right quality player there in terms of his movement and just his energy levels and and what he gave to the game and how hard he worked off the ball and you know you know lost causes you know down in the corners and, and blocking things you know getting down the line those small little you know details to a manager and to a team it just lifts everyone so um you know those little things he was doing yesterday um, you know, leading from the front. So uh, it's it bodes well for the future, that's for sure. We've got Ryan McGinley with me. We've got Ewan as well. Um, first time meeting you, Ewan. First time Good, being back <laughs> at, at Celtic Park in a long, long time. What was your thoughts on the, the spectacle of the game last night? I oh, just absolutely adored it, man. Just see uh, actually being back at Celtic Park for the first time. And you just, it's the wee things. It's uh, losing a stone coming up this massive set of stairs. It's seeing the picture <laughs> the first time. It's uh, makes it nice for the boys, you know, all this just all this sort of pre-match rituals you can't forget about. You've been away for so long and loved it, absolutely loved it. Can't wait to get back to you. We tear in your eye at any stage tonight? I, I didn't feel a tear in my eye, but I, I certainly felt emotional without being sort of... Emotional without being emotional, I would say. Um, I could definitely feel the sort of moment, the momentous occasion of being back at a sort of capacity Celtic Stadium. Um, just being back was absolutely brilliant. It felt like I was coming home. 7 2 aggregate win against Jablonic. We would all have taken that before the tie, but I still feel there's much more to come from this Celtic team. That's the, I think that's the absolutely exciting thing that's coming from this Celtic team. There is definitely more to come. We didn't get out of second gear tonight. I felt like it could have been 6 or 7 nothing if the Celtic team wanted it, but do you know what? They just held back and just dominated the game. Um, I was so impressed. It was a sort of different performance to what it was on Sunday. It was so measured, but we still were clinical when we needed to be. David Turnbull with the two goals. I'm so glad that he got goals to his game because his last performance deserved a couple of goals. Yeah. So I'm glad that yeah. he got a couple of goals to add to his performances over the past couple of games. Um, totally dominant. The other team didn't lay a, lay a glove on us, to be honest. I, I don't think anyway. Um, 
a couple of great saves from the goalkeeper as well. What more can you ask for? It was utterly dominant from start to finish. We're going to come on to the, the saves from Joe Hart because I, I genuinely, I'm not even joking here, I had a tear in my eye when the saves were made in the roar from Celtic Park. Hi everyone, welcome back to 67 Hail Hail for the live reaction to Celtic 3, Heart of Midlothian 2. I was at the game, I have found a quiet bit, about five minute walk from Celtic Park. This Celtic team still has a long way to go and I think that's where a lot of the enthusiasm comes from. They, they can see the start of something here but who knows how good this Celtic team could be. Yeah, I mean, if anyone's wondering about the Ryan Christie situation, you know, there's a bit of concern that you might have missed the game because of a transfer reason. We know that he's got a, a contract running down. Anne said before the game he was just carrying a knock from the, the Jablonets game on Thursday night and that, he's, you know, he was sitting this one out, probably being rested for the AZ Alkmaar game midweek. We are chatting after Celtic 2, AZ Alkmaar now. Um, I'm not at a disco. I'm not in a nightclub. <laughs> I am somewhere sheltered under... The uh, Emirates Arena, I believe they call it, David. I've got a big, uh, bright purple light shining on me. Hopefully it looks okay for all of you watching. Quite a busy stream tonight, David, and with good reason, because I don't know about you, mate, but I thought that was really, really good. Absolutely superb. You know, I was saying yesterday, I didn't think we'd win by more than one goal if we were going to win the game tonight. That just blew me away, the performance. Yeah, AZ Altmar created some chances. You know what? They're a very good side. They're going to create chances at this level. The way we dealt with the pressure going into tonight, the opposition we were up against, the energy we showed for the match. And I'm not just talking about some of the players who've been performing recently. Like Sods on Edward coming on for the final half an hour and chasing every ball down. Ange Postacoglu seems to have got something going with a squad, not just certain individuals, but the squad as a whole. And tonight it was just busting out the team for me. You can feel it in the air. Um, mm. You can feel it as a Celtic fan. You could feel it at the game tonight. There's something building here. Um, I, I tweeted just there saying there's worse teams in AZ Altmar playing the Champions League group stage mm. every single season. I think that is a pretty good, t a pretty good side. Third in the Eredivisie last season, the way they moved the ball at times. Um, certainly the, the toughest game we've had this season by far. A step up in Hearts, a step up in Mitchell for sure, if not two steps. Yes, they created chances. Yes, they should probably have had one, if not two goals tonight. But I thought Celtic again answered it tonight. I thought we controlled the game for long spells. We're finding out that certain players, the likes of Ralston, Stephen Welsh as well, he was absolutely sublime tonight. Um, the likes of Ralston, we're finding players are performing at levels we didn't even know they had in them. You know, I don't think anybody could have saw this. Um, renaissance, if you want to call it, from Ralston. Talk to me about the, the revivals of Tom Rogic and Anthony Ralston then, Jackie, because these are two players I'd certainly, I think, I'd written them both off as being players who could contribute this season and they both look like they're playing, you know, at a level that none of us expected they could reach. As a player, do you just sometimes find a manager that you can just... I don't know, do you, do you find a manager you want to work harder for? Do you find a manager that you just feel more comfortable playing for? And is that what's maybe happened with um, Rogic and Ralston? I think it's part of it. I think there's a number of issues that, that, that's helped. Um, you know, the way he plays. Um, for Ralston, it's the people above him, the energy in front of him. It makes his job there. He's got options in the ball. I don't know if I've even mentioned the name Liam Scales on the channel yet. There's a lot of negativity when it comes towards the, the League of Ireland and players that come out of the League of Ireland. I, I don't want to say that it's a snobbery, but anybody that's not familiar with the league, I can understand why they would maybe look at the likes of Liam Scales and the price that we signed them for and kind of think, well, we're Celtic. Why are we not aiming a little bit higher, a little bit better, a little bit of a... Higher profile, should we say. This guy has everything. And if we were to bring in Juranovic, it would be quite a promising signing for Celtic, a Croatian international at right back. Celtic was the one. Celtic was the club that he needed to join. There are also a few other clubs that are interested in uh, Josip Juranovic, such as uh, Fiorentina from uh, Italy. But I think that uh, Juranovic had, um, he heard a lot of good things about Scottish football. Right, yesterday, we'll, we'll, we'll start with that. Um, brilliant, brilliant performance just yet again. Um, 
excellent. We're winning games in the first half at the moment. We've done that, I think, for the last three domestic home matches. We've had the game pretty much wrapped up in the first half and have been able to come you know, off our level in the second half and still score goals. I just think this team's playing brilliantly. The tempo they play at is so, so good to see. The fans are really buying into it. The atmosphere yesterday for a home game against St Mirren was akin to maybe like a Hearts or Aberdeen a few years ago. Now, I know fans have missed games for a while, but, you know, this was our fifth home game in the space of two weeks and the place was still pretty packed. There was probably, you know, well over 50,000, I would say, at the game yesterday. The atmosphere was great and, you know, the fans are just slowly, well, not even slowly, quickly buying into this team. It's It's been quite a turnaround. Yeah, but I think we've spoken before about how the the team are feeding the crowd and the crowd are feeding the team and it's like a vicious circle for the opposition. Um, the way Ange plays his football, his teams play their football, it's in part designed to get the crowd off their feet, be you know, be entertained, but also just bring passion to your 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 match day experience. And I think you can see that regardless of who we're playing, whether it's a European match, whether it's St Mirren, Dundee. You know, so far we've we've played games at varying levels, and the atmosphere has been the same. But the performance and or the intent of the performance has been the same. When I first heard the name Ange Postecoglou, I, I won't lie, I went who, and then I did you know a bit of you know research into him, and I heard all these Aussie people saying this guy is you know the greatest guy ever, and I kind of thought right, that's a little bit exciting, but maybe you're getting ahead of yourself a bit. But I feel it already. I, I feel the things that that Vince spoke to me about in that interview. I feel it already and I didn't expect to feel it this early. In terms of this week coming, mm. Alkmaar Thursday night, Rangers on Sunday, um, I think it's going to be a, a huge, huge test. <sighs> well, I'll tell you something. Um, hot summer nights and Celtic defending a narrow lead in Europe away from home <laughs> isn't a good combination. I'm absolutely sweating. I'm genuinely roasting. I'm sweating partially down to the the hot weather we're having at the moment, probably mainly down to just how nerve-wracking that was. Um, David, it's going to be a funny kind of reaction to do because I I just feel... I'm so ecstatic, but I just feel so drained of everything. It was was crazy, honestly, absolutely crazy. I don't think many of us after the second goal flew in, well, flew in, bundled in for uh, (laughs) Alkmaar that... uh, we thought we'd be going through. You know, I, I had I had visions of 4-1, 5-1. I thought we would crumble. To their credit, for the majority of the second half, I thought they defended relatively well. Right, Celtic know who they will have to beat to get through in the Europa League. We have been drawn in a group with the following Bayer Leverkusen, Real Betis and Ferenc Varos, our old friends from Hungary. It's everyone, it's finally happened. The big dog of Celtic YouTube... Mr. Big dog. Wow. I'm about to introduce you, mate. Is you need to let me finish this. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Fitzsimmons, aka Ryan 118. Yes. He's finally come to 67 Hill Hill. I know that's a lot of numbers, everyone, but he's here. 118 x 67. It's just about time. I feel like, honestly, I feel like I'm on the karaoke. I'm about to start <laughs> Frank Sinatra or something. I love this. It's brilliant. Thanks for having me on, Hamish. More than welcome. We're here at Celtic Park, if you haven't already noticed. Yes. Um, <laughs> Hamish, Ryan, Celtic Park. The sun is even shining. Mm-hmm. What more can you want? We're going to chat about. Obviously, the big game that's on tomorrow at Ibrox against Rangers. OK, so defeat for Celtic this afternoon at Ibrox. Um, hugely, hugely disappointing game. A game that I think we all feel Celtic could have got more out of. We'll just open it up early doors. John, I'll get your thoughts on the game. Yeah, just frustrated. You know, sometimes after these games, you're gutted. Sometimes you're raging. For me, it's just a case of frustration today. Fella, like that was a game, as you say, we had more, more to give in. And let down by a weak corner again, let down by a couple of poor individual performances. Collectively, in the second half, just wasn't weren't good enough. And unfortunately, I think Ange was just a little bit too slow to react to, to you know, the decision to play Kyogo through the middle. So a lot to chat about. But yeah, my, my main feeling after that is, is frustration. I do think there's, there's an argument to be made here that we're kind of on the right road. And I don't think we're miles away from Rangers now. You know, some Rangers fans will gloat and, and, you know, mock me for saying that. But I think if you look at the performance of both teams today, I don't think there was a lot in it. And I don't think you can really argue that there was much in it. Um, you know, they scored from the corner, but what did Joe Hart have to do other than that, really? Not not a lot, to be honest. But yeah, again, weak from the corner and there's no denying it. And I'm not trying to gloss over our failings today. But I do think, you know, 
there's a, there's a case to be made that we're on the right track here and we need to keep improving. We need to keep believing in this progress. You know, Ange needs a bit more backing in the transfer market before uh, end of Tuesday night. And then we'll see where we go. And, you know, the, the New Year's game is a long way away now, but there's a lot of time for us to improve and keep improving. So, you know, I don't think the team will be too disheartened today by their performance. Yeah. But I think, that I, like us, they'll be disappointed and frustrated that it, it never went our way. Yes, it's transfer deadline day, or as Celtic fans like to call it, Tuesday. I think we should start with what's been done today in terms of incomings, because Celtic have announced two new players. Um, I know that we've kind of known about them for a long time, but Georgios Jakumakis, is that how we're pronouncing this? Better not do a Pat Bonner. And um, Yota from Benfica. I didn't think he would score more than 15 goals, um, and that's also because we are relegation battling side. We were relegated, unfortunately, and but mostly those teams, the, the lowest five teams, need a striker that scores 10 plus goals. I would think he would do that, but not exceptionally well now. But obviously, he scored uh, twice or th- uh, three times, four four goals in a game, so that really helps uh, penalties as well. But I think I do think. This this was a top season for him, but I still think he's a 15-plus goals uh, season guy. Celtic are going with Jota, I think. Is that what people in Portugal call him? Yeah, yeah, Jota. Yeah, Jota. It's just the sound of the letter J in Portuguese is pronounced Jota. So a yeah. lot of players who have the letter J in the name will just go with Jota. Hi, Jota. Hello. Um, hiya. You've been a, a Benfica fan, I think, since you were young. Celtic have played Benfica quite a few times over the last 15 years. Were yeah. you at any of those games? Do you have any memories of Celtic? Yes, actually, there's there's a really good story about the game at home in Benfica in Lisbon. Uh, because in the end, I, I was in that game, I was in the stands watching the game. And in the end of the game, um, there was like three Celtic fans who were walking with me. And they, I was very young, I was like 11 years old or something like that. And they, they asked me if we wanted to change scarves because you guys have the green and white scarf and we have the um, red and white scarf. And they said, yeah, do you want to switch up? And I said, I, I want it. So I think I still have that scarf at home. So coincidences or no, I think the story was meant to be. So yeah, right now I'm a Celtic player and I think it was, it was a good thing in the past. It's probably best for both parties that Ryan Christie's moved on, but Celtic can have a player in Yota who wants to be here now and wants to impress and wants to do more for the team instead of just himself. That's my take on it, though. But again, don't wish him any harm. I want the best to him, but I think we'll move on just fine. Um, people people are asking here um, in the chat, seeing if there's any breaking news or anything I think Ed- Edward's just been announced, John. Oh, there we go then. So, it's yeah, Edward um, away. He got to say it. Right, when we signed off our live deadline day video last night, we said that Celtic had probably finished their transfer business. Lo and behold, we got a late kind of uh, signing with Cameron Carter Vickers, the American 23 year old centre back, coming in on a season long loan from Tottenham Hotspur. There's an option to buy in that deal as well. So, when Celtic fans see Carter Vickers playing for the first time, hopefully very soon, what is the first thing do you think that's going to kind of spring out from, from Carter Vickers the way he plays? I think just, you know, he plays, uh, you know, very aggressive uh, as a center back should, Uh, maybe not over aggressive in a way, but, um, you know, he does a lot of small things, right? Um, Maybe things that go a little unnoticed. We're chatting after Celtic 3, Ross County now, uh, comfortable win in the end, Stevie, but um, it didn't seem that way for a lot of the game. No, it didn't. It certainly wasn't a 3-0 game. I know that it literally was but you know what I mean it certainly didn't feel like that at all and the complexion of the game really could have changed if Ross County took their chance when we went 1-0 up which we had to have to say was quite fortunate the way we scored and I did say Hamish me and you agreed that um, you tweeted it but I was saying to uh, people I was sitting with for the game that was probably the only way we were scoring yeah. but if you date positives out of it I don't want to you know, be too basic about it but it is, it's three points it's another clean sheet and the team will get confidence, especially guys like Yeti as well when they scored day two goals. When yeah. It wasn't particularly great, but no. certainly I it was it was a strange game in that respect, but you will take the, the good from it. Was that, dare I say it, you and the, the sign of champions? 
I don't know. I like it, but I mean, it's that thing about winning ugly, isn't it? That's how you win. That's how you win the leagues. But it's it's very strange that we can talk about a game where we won three 0 and still come away with like doubts and and talk about how it wasn't particularly fluid. I think that was to be expected, though. There was a lot of new new faces there. Some I thought uh, did pretty well, um, especially considering their debut, considering the crowd, considering the conditions, I suppose. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, yeah, it was a strange sort of game. And I think again, like three 0 flatters us, but I'll take it every day. You know, who who stood out for you? I thought on his debut, I felt Kevin and Carter Vickers was certainly decent. Um, I wouldn't say it was a world-beating performance, and I was it wasn't particularly up against exceptional opponents. But I thought he did okay, and as you say, I mean, it did take a bit of responsibility, which led to the goal, which mm. we needed to see. Bit of a shock, wasn't it? The news yesterday that Don McKay's away. Yeah, no, it was <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, no, it was a huge shock. I absolutely did not see that coming, and and, and it really caused concerns about you know whether all, all this talk he had about modern, modernization and changing structures and all these things he wanted to do at the club. I've got to assume they were in his job interview. So, you know, clearly the the, the board backed that at the time. What's changed in this two months? I have no absolutely no idea, um, and it's it's pretty scary. There's two possible schools of thought. I think one is that Don McKay wasn't up to much. Mm-hmm. Um, possibly a bit of that and the second one was that he was almost up to too much and he, he almost wanted to take the club too too much of a way forward that the, the people in power at the moment didn't you know want to go but, now there, were, there are always these daft whatsapp rumours whatsapp rumours going around huddle board rumours going around Kerrydale street rumours going around but you never really take any notice of them so when it was chatted about on Thursday night that Don McCarthy was <laughs> was preparing to leave Celtic and Celtic were preparing for a big announcement, it's one of those things I just wrote off and just basically said that's a load of nonsense. Um, so I, although the, I had heard the rumour, I was still completely taken aback when Celtic notified the London Stock Exchange, which is also a laugh because that's usually at the heart of these rumours yeah, is that no. Celtic are going to make an announcement to the London Stock Exchange and it turns out that's exactly how it pl- panned out. So... Um, it was a good day for the rumour merchants, let's say. And yeah, I, I was shocked, mate. I mean, I, I was really shocked. Um, I was surprised. I was I was certainly initially worried. I've calmed down a bit now. It's uh, a bolt out of the blue. And yeah, we've had the backstory from, you know, Celtic officials saying that it hasn't quite worked out and they've not been happy with how he's done a few things progressively within the football club since he's come. There's always two sides to these stories, isn't there, guys? Um, and that's the interesting thing. Will we hear the other side of the story? Probably not. So will we ever know? Who knows? But the main the main thing is, and the most important thing is, the results on the pitch, guys. A big game on Thursday night then. Real Betis versus Celtic in Seville, a city that is quite well known to Celtic fans. We're really looking forward to this game. I was a bit scared after your words. I feel a bit more relaxed. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it will be a very hard game. And for us, Celtic is the most difficult uh, team uh, of the group. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that it will be a very hard game. But lucky for us, we are in a in a better shape right now. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what's happening. Real Betis 4, Celtic 3. That only tells a fraction of the story, guys. Celtic, excellent, I thought, for most of the first half, certainly maybe 30, 35 minutes. We're 2-0 up. We could easily be 3-0 up. Um, We then concede two really slack goals and two more in the second half. Um, We end up going 4-2 down. We kind of rally late on. And we end the game with a defeat. Right, everyone, full steam ahead. A huge, huge, monumental game tomorrow. Away to Livingston, the Theatre of Screams, the Tony Macaroni Arena, an arena, if it is even an arena, that has not been very kind to Celtic over the last few years. And it simply has to be this time. Hello and welcome back to 67 Hail Hail. You find us five minutes after... Uh, Livingston won Celtic nil. Another disappointing day away from home. Um, you join a fellow McGinley. You've got Ryan McGinley <laughs> and then John McGinley here. John, mate, how how did you find that? It was a, a tough watch. You could say. Yeah, a, a real tough watch. Kind of no real hiding places after that. Um, it's difficult because when you you lose away in Europe against a, a team like Betis, you can take positives away from it. But I thought the performance matched the result today in the sense that I don't think we, we probably really deserved anything out of that at times. Kind of okay in spells, but never really put anything together that you could really hang your hat on. And 
effectively, you know, what do we work the goalkeeper once? Mm-hmm. Today is like the first time where I feel like we're gone away from home. We've been we've lost the game and it's not a game we should have lost. You know, especially you know, I think there's going to be a bit of to and fro in, in terms of Rangers dropping points and Celtic dropping points this this season. But today's a game that we really need to to put away. My big problem or my big concern is that Celtic can't afford to be a team that only gets results at home. We need to be a team that can go on the road and play successfully. Right, folks, Celtic are into the semi-finals of the Premier Sports Cup after a 3-0 home win over Wraith Rovers. I am at Celtic Park. You wouldn't know it looking at me. Um, I'm just glad you can actually see me because it is quite dark here. Okay, so I'm sitting pretty, half past three, Friday afternoon, my beers are through there cooling in the fridge, the weekend is nearly here, the Friday video on 67 Hail Hail is pretty much done and then boom, major announcement from Celtic that Captain Callum McGregor has signed a new five year contract. Obviously I've been here for for nearly 20 years now and you know it's it's been a part of me growing up um, to come for the academy and come all the way through, make make the breakthrough, um, and now to be to be club captain, it's something I'm hugely proud of. Um, I see the club moving in the right direction. You know, I've had conversations with the board and and several guys around it, um, and and we see the club progressing in a in a positive way. Imagine Celtic come through these next three matches, win on Sunday against Dundee United. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, listen, we would love to have been in a bit of a better frame of mind. Um, Celtic have dropped more points, sadly, in the league this afternoon. We're going to chat about the game, big style with you and Stevie. Definitely in a, a tough place at the moment, um, you and you know everyone knows the the well documented injury problems. We're we're missing um, key players. We're missing Kyogo. We're missing McGregor. Um, even Chris Julian. We're missing Hi. James Forrest. Um, it's a squad that's kind of down to its bare bones at the moment. Um, how do you feel after today's drop points? Uh, um, yeah, it was just an extremely frustrating watch. Uh, just squandering opportunity after opportunity. Um, there were some particularly bad performances I imagine we'll get to. I don't want to spoil that, but it's just just something isn't clicking at the moment. Thursday night against Leverkusen, you could argue there's not a great deal of expectation that Celtic will go and beat Leverkusen. I don't think many... Celtic fans are, are looking at that fiction and going, yeah, we'll go and beat the second best team in Germany the way we're playing at the moment. What's the size of the task tomorrow night then against the, the team currently sitting in second in the Bundesliga? Big task for Celtic. I think there's no doubt about that. Leverkusen, for me, are one of the most, most watchable teams in the Bundesliga. Not just good in quality terms, but easy on the eye. Pretty disappointing. The the scoreline kind of talks for itself. Celtic nil, Bayer Leverkusen four. Tomorrow, a Celtic legend returns in a roundabout way to face the club. I was pretty young, although I was at the game when Henrik Larsson played and scored against Celtic. Still not over that. Let's hope Scott Brown doesn't have his shooting boots on tomorrow. This is the day, this is the day that we win away. You've got to embrace it, Stevie. We've won a game away from home. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Sorry, I almost forgot you were there. We're live on uh, 67 Hill Hill, live, I should add, from Babbity Bouchsters in the Merchant City. And we're speaking after Aberdeen won Celtic 2. Let us know in the chat if you can see us and hear us. Um, Stevie... Amazing, isn't it? It's amazing to support a team that wins games away from home. It's brilliant, and it's amazing to finally be positive here after a game. You'll find a way to get negatives out of the way. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure those wonderful people in the comments will be saying very nice things about me as usual. But no, it was great. It was it was so nerve wracking though, wasn't it? It was like I mean the last ten minutes were were murder, but we finally done it. First win away since February the fourteenth. <sighs> Too long for a club like us, it really is, but I'm just glad we've finally done it and we can now look forward instead of always worrying about that all the time. We can now sort of go forward with this team and so, and so can the manager. Can you I want to tell them what you were about to wear at the start before you had to wear this? You want to tell the audience? And I'm glad we didn't do this. Basically had the exact same... Uh, well, I put it on for a laugh. No, please don't. I'm going to put it on for a laugh. Fine. Take it away. I don't know what to say. At this point, um, I'm going to give a running commentary. And Hamish is indeed putting this track at top on. It's not a wind up, everyone. He's genuinely doing it. There he is. Sensational. We're brothers. 
we're brothers. And it's just about looking forward now, not going on about you know past poor results or anything. It's now just about getting this team to regroup, refocus, and we have got. I mean, this is all well and good today, but we have got a tough it run. Means nothing up. if we if very we mess tough up next up month. In Fir Park and Easter Road, you know my thoughts on them. And tougher the, than today, yeah. The double header against Fair and Faros too, because yeah, I, I know that we're looking at that, going that's that's you know that's the level that's maybe. We could be looking to get four or six points for that, but think of how they're feeling as well, looking at us and their results. So it's two teams that are very much poised to... Aye, it's going to be a toughie. Domestic's what matters though, isn't it? And it is, domestic yeah. football, is we, if we keep winning games, you know, people people will, will kind of put the other L's in Europe to one side. And we did the business today. I know there's so much to be worked on in this Celtic team. I expect Ange to maybe... I've not seen his post-match comments, but I expect he'll come out and say it was an important win, but there's so much more we can improve on. This Celtic team is going to get better, but what this Celtic team has to do while they're getting better is they have to win matches, mm -hmm. and today they did that.